Hello, this is Stacy Shiflett. I want to give you just a quick update. This will be a short video. I've got several more that I'm going to be making over the next few days, uh, dealing with different subjects and topics, and I didn't want to put them all into one video. And so if you would, subscribe to this channel, and you can get notified whenever I upload the next video, which will be very soon. But this was just going to be a short video with a quick summary of what happened today. Uh, the takeaway for me was two, really, two surprises. Number one, as I sat in the courtroom today with my wife and several of our church members and staff members uh, there, and uh, uh, when Sarah and her family was there as well, I was, I was shocked to see that there was not a single person that came to be with Cameron today as he was sentenced. He pled guilty back in uh, last year, and we knew the sentencing was today, but not a family member. Uh, his pastor, Greg Neal, was nowhere to be found. Uh, his advocates, his defenders, these preachers and evangelists, that travel all over the country. I'm sure some of them had some frequent flyer miles they could have cashed in and come and sit with their buddy in trial, in, in trial today and in court today, but not a single person was there except for Cameron and his lawyer. And that surprised me. I really thought out of all the people that are saying he was innocent, people saying that he was framed, people saying that he was coerced, people saying that he's pleading guilty because he didn't have a choice, that he's been lied on, his character's been maligned and trying to paint him out to be some kind of a hero, some kind of a spiritual man with character and integrity, a man worthy of a position of an assistant pastor, a Bible college president. You would think that out of all these people that have invited him in to preach and sing in their church, you'd think at least one of them would have come and been with him today, but he sat there alone on that bench with his lawyer, and that surprised me. I really thought somebody would have been there. But the second thing that I did not see coming, I just got off the phone with Sarah. She didn't see it coming. It was a bombshell as far as we're concerned because there was a statement that was made by his lawyer as he was trying to negotiate an easier sentence and an easier uh, outcome for his client. His logic and his reasoning as he talked to that judge was, my client deserves an easier sentence because the relationship that he had with this woman was consensual. When he said that, I looked at my wife. I said, did he just say consensual? She said he did. He used the word several times. And Sarah has just told me she's going to get her hands on the transcript, and hopefully she will make that public. And you can go and see for yourself that in the courtroom today, Cameron Giovanelli's attorney admitted in a courtroom full of people that Cameron Giovanelli was not only pleading guilty to some of the charges that had been made against him, but that he admitted that it was a consensual relationship. Now, forget the fact that he was a married man, a pastor, considerably older than Sarah Jackson at the time, was 17 years old. Forget the fact that he groomed her. Forget the fact that he imposed himself on her and used his authority and his position to impose his will upon her and to convince her that she was special. And, and, he, and, and forget all of that. The, the, the lawyer was trying to negotiate a lighter sentence because it was consensual. This is after Cameron has said he was innocent, said he didn't do it, said it was a lie, said he never did anything wrong, said it was all false accusations. Sarah's been slandered. She's been lied on. She's been called everything in, in the book. And now in that, in that moment, all of the truth came out. The vindication that we've prayed for, it came out today. Now, unfortunately, there were uh, none of his friends and defenders were in the courtroom to actually witness it. And so they probably will not believe it because, you know, their slogan is, if you didn't see it, it didn't happen. Well, I was there and I saw it. And trust me, it happened. And so we praise the Lord for that outcome. He was sentenced to 90 days in um, the Baltimore County Detention Center. They were trying to get a house arrest. They were trying to get a, a place. They had already secured a place here in Baltimore for him to work out his house arrest. Uh, but... Um, the judge wouldn't hear it. He sentenced him to 90 days in jail, five years probation. Uh, he does not have to register as a sex offender. Uh, that was part of the plea bargain, but he cannot interact and be around children, uh, minors, during the time of his probation. So uh, we're grateful that this has hopefully come to a conclusion. We're praying that Sarah and her family can heal and move past this. We're praying our church can heal and move past this. We will be in the news again tonight. We're already in the news. We're in the newspapers. We're on the television uh, stations again tonight for the third time for all the wrong reasons as Calvary Baptist Church of Dundalk, Maryland has been drugged through the mud through this entire ordeal. But to God be the glory. 
Justice was served today. We're praying for God to help us move past this. We want to thank you for your prayers. And I hope that you will subscribe to this channel. I will be putting up some more videos in the next few days. I'll be talking about Greg Neal. I'll be talking about Bob Gray Sr. I'll be talking about Tom Neal. I'll be talking about Alan Domley. I will go back and revisit the reason I made the video back in May of 2018 about Dr. Treber and North Valley Baptist Church. There's been some questions. There's been a lot of people saying, I don't know why you did that. I'm going to go back and explain why I did that. And I want you to be able to understand why and know that we, we handled this situation the way we felt like God wanted us to handle it. And we're grateful for the outcome. Justice has been served and uh, we thank you for your prayers. We'll keep you posted and uh, just uh, keep watching. We'll put some more videos up shortly. In the meantime, may the Lord bless you. We'll talk to you later.